Welcome everyone to the AMG podcast. Now in the past, we've done audio only. We've had a lot of requests to add a video component to it. And that's what you're seeing or listening to now. And uh, just let you follow along with some of the concepts that we talk about a little bit easier to have the video available to you. And as always, this episode is brought to you by our Live View Pro camera. And we've got one of those right here. If you're not using feedback when you practice, you are basically exercising. Yeah, you're, you're not doing anything to change your swing, right? Because you can't see what you're doing. That's right. You're not using any kind of feedback. You really are just exercising. So the live view, you can set it there, connect it to your iPad or your phone, and watch yourself as you're making the movements to see if you're doing what you're trying to do so the reality of what you're doing matches what you're feeling. If you're going to spend the time to work on your golf swing and you want to get the most out of that time spent, you want something like live view because it will – it's like – Practicing in a microwave, you will, for an hour spent, it'd be like three hours spent with anything else. Um, we recommend it to everybody. Absolutely. We use it. Yeah. Use it. players use it. Uh, it's that good. Uh, you can get one of these at $40 off a discount code by going to liveviewsports.com backslash AMG, and they'll put the, ca- the camera in your cart and apply the discount for you as soon as you uh, go you to the website. Yeah. That's exactly right. All right, Sean, for those who don't know, <laughs> AMG podcast is where we try to help golfers with their golf swings in 15 minutes or less, right? And today's going to be no exception. And when we get emailed every week from uh, Martin, the guy who owns a golf coach app, we Mm -hmm. use it every day with our online lessons and our elite lessons. Uh, Martin will send out the winner of the week. So yesterday, Colin Morikawa, he will send out their strokes gains categories. And I would say probably in 10 of the last or eight of the last 10 tournaments, the winner has been leading or very close to the lead in approach shots. Yeah. I mean, you got to hit greens. You got to hit it close to the hole. And that's what that number represents, right? He's hitting it close enough to make birdies. Exactly right. And when you look at like in Colin's case, he was plus 9.54 strokes gain, which is staggering. It's almost plus 10 on. And this is not, you know, an off an off field event. This is where the best players in the world are all in the field, and he was almost plus ten strokes gain with approach shots. You can really start to see how good players they have to do something to separate themselves from the field to win, right? Because mm-hmm. the tour is full of good players now, and to win out there on tour or to win in your weekly match, you have to do something exceptional or above and beyond what you typically do. In Colin's case, he does an average plus 10 strokes gained approach shots. I'm sure he wish he would or could, but it's taking advantage of those hot weeks that really start to separate yourself. Now, what we want to talk to you today about in this podcast is a really cool way to learn how to and to check yourself how to maximize your ability to increase your strokes gained approaches. Yeah, how to hit it more solid and straighter. And your approach shots to the green, whether that be half shots, three-quarter shots, or full shots, that's what we're going to cover today. Make your game way more boring when it comes to uh, approach shots. Nice and boring. (laughs) Strike show. So our good buddy Dan Frost, uh, was we were on a Zoom with him last week, and he had a really cool comment. It was, he said, uh, transition is impact. Can you explain what he was meaning by that? Yeah, and so – what he meant was transitions impact is so little time from when the club starts to change direction out of the top to impact that you really don't have a lot of time to change much. Uh, so you want to have things pretty well organized at that halfway back mark, which is actually left arm parallel to the ground on the back swing. That's the halfway. Mark. Yeah. Let's emphasize that half of your golf swing is over at left arm parallel, not the top of the swing. Time wise. Now everyone yes. thinks it, you know, they thinks that, the top of the backswing is half the swing, but it's really not. Right. We're talking about time frame, left arm parallel, it's halfway over. So you, you're you better off having it in a good spot at that point so that the rest of the swing just becomes more reactionary. Just finish the swing and make a non-thinking athletic downswing. That's To me, that's the best way to play golf. And it hurts our soul when we hear someone say, the backswing doesn't matter. The downswing is all that matters. Mm. You don't hit it in the backswing, right? We all know when nobody hits it in the backswing or shouldn't hopefully hit it in the backswing. But when you have less than a quarter of a second downswing and it from start or from top to impact is like that, you better have a good backswing. 
I mean, there's just no time to undo everything. Right. Yeah. No, you don't want to use a quarter of a second as a recovery window. Uh, you want to use your athleticism in the downswing to hit better shots, not recover from poor positioning. And if there's one separation between the professionals and the amateurs that we work with every day, it's in that first half of the golf swing, that up to left arm parallel. We see more swings get off the rails than any other part in the swing. It's interesting. The the higher handicappers want to just try to fix impact. The better the golfer, a lot of times they understand, okay, it's a setup and then this first part of the swing that dictates where the club goes. And everything matters. How this club goes back and goes into the top, that's going to help determine how it changes direction. So if you can start thinking about your swing in those regard, that regard, yes. instead of just trying to fix impacts, they go, why is it coming out of the top in a certain way? And then why is that causing me to slice the ball? Start backtracking where the – the beginning of the root fault is, and a lot of times it's in that first two feet of the backswing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First two feet, and then I don't know how many feet's in the first half of the backswing. Yeah. Then you you stack those first six feet of club travel, and you're essentially you're setting your swing off on the right foot, giving it every chance to succeed in the downswing, or you're making the downswing brutally difficult for yourself. And we all have the impact we have. You see something you don't like at impact, you're flipping or whatever, chicken wing or whatever. We all have those things in our downswings and at impact because we have to have them there to give us the best chance at hitting the ball towards where we're trying to hit it. No one chooses those things. You have to have them there based on what happens before that. So the best way to fix that is to rewind the swing a little bit and dive into that takeaway and early part of the backswing. Absolutely. You make a good point there. You start to rewind it a little bit and say, what, what is really causing this? And the more you can think about your swing like that, the better you're going to get. Yeah. Force precedes motion. So if you see something at a certain part of your golf swing on camera, you have to understand, and it helps to understand that that's not where you attack the problem at when you see it. You have to go back and attack the problem of when it starts. And most often you can't see when it starts because again, force precedes motion. Yeah, or you can't see where it starts because you don't have any feedback. That's, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah let's just view. make it real basic really as far as no it. feedback. Yeah. You don't need, a lot of you don't even know you have a problem yet, right? So once you start using your camera on your phone even, anything, yes. anything when you go to practice, just use something so you can film your swing from a good angle to see what's going on, and you'll, that'll pay dividends instead of just beating balls endlessly and mindlessly. Well, you're a professional, and that was a great segue so let's look at some real swings now, and we're going to show you exactly what to look for when hopefully you're filming your swing. Perfect. All right, so the first swing we're going to look at was yesterday's winter. Seems fitting. And I want to thank Jake Thurm. He's a good instructor, good buddy, uh, for taking the time and getting this camera angle situated. And we'll talk more about the camera angles in a second because it plays a huge part. When you're filming your swing, you want to take the time. It takes an extra 10 seconds to make sure you have your camera set up correctly because you're going to see truly what you do. If you don't set it up correctly, you're going to get a really distorted view of what's happening. But this is a good camera angle of Colin. He's hitting an iron here. And what we're going to see when we start to roll him back, and we're going to go to shaft parallel first, right here. This is what you want to look for. You want to look at where is your left arm, okay? Is it angled way out here? We see that on lesson teams. Or is it angled way in here? We see way more of that on lesson twos. Yeah, taking the arms really deep, really early, maybe staying overly connected, not quite understanding what needs to happen in that first part of the swing. And that's a common pattern for the high percentage of golfers because a lot of golfers slice that early in backswing and then a late lift up and over. That causes the chopping pattern, right, and the slice that we see so many guys hit. Absolutely. We had a good lesson yesterday with a golfer, a good player. This, this is not a bad player move. This mm -hmm. is a golfer move. Yeah. A good player was taught to really kind of drive the backswing with the turning of the body and everything, and the arms just got in and around them, and the arms are going to lift in the swing. If you want to hit the ball. You want to control when they lift. Okay, right. That's your job. The arm should provide the up and down. The body should provide the depth of the swing, right? He got all the depth with the arms early, and he forced him to late lift. And when your hands are lifting late, and for him it was a lift and a fold like so many golfers, the right arm, when your hands are doing that, coming into transition and the body starts turning, everything's going to be pulled out. 
Yep. It, it takes the hands out toward the target line too much. And then again, yep. you're in recovery mode. A lot of you that even early extend and stand up is because those hands are working out toward the target line so much. You have to stand up to get the club in a shallow enough spot to make contact. So it goes back to what Mike said about the impact you have. You have to have it just to hit the ball. That's exactly right. So you want the arm hanging pretty vertically here. And, and here's a good window to look for. It's just, you know, a 90 degree arm. That would be dead 90. His is very close. Or you can just look, are the hands over the toe line? Pretty And solid. you're in good shape. Yeah, yep. get you in a window that, to, that will work. Exactly right. All right, let's continue him up now. We take him here to left arm parallel. Now here is a very important part of the golf swing because rarely are you ever going to land on the stock eight iron, nine iron, or whatever stock number is every time you play golf, right? Golf is mostly shaving shaving yardage is off, slowing speed down. It's off speed and three quarter shots. If your club arms and hands are in a poor position at this left arm parallel spot right here, doing that, taking sh speed off, taking shorter back swings is going to be exponentially more difficult. Most of you probably won't do it. And we see in lessons every day, hey, the golfers have struggled with this 70 yard maybe mm -hmm. wedge, kind of a uh, less than full swing. They have a hard time with it because they can't change direction at that halfway mark or three quarter spot. They have to make their whole motion and then decel into the ball. And we just, they hit some terrible shots like that. Right. And then let's say you have your, and this is what we see all the time. Let's say your hands are way out here, right? They mm -hmm. didn't get any depth at all. Yeah. Okay, you're set up for a pull. Yeah. Your hands are way back here, which we see a lot of. You're set up for a push. Yeah. You're either going to drop it under or maybe even shift them out again, and then you're right back in the yep. same poor yep. spot. So what you want to look for instead is if we just draw a line straight down the middle of his body, you can see those hands are pretty much mid-body. Mm -hmm. It's a good spot to kind of refer back to. That's a great checkpoint. Yep. So at any point in his backswing, in this window here, he can make a downswing and hit the ball pretty darn straight. Because there's, he doesn't have to compensate for anything. He doesn't need to let the swing run off to give him time to change planes or shift or shallow or any of that stuff. He can pretty much just change directions at any point in this backswing because he is very synced up with the proper depth and elevation and up with his arms and his body. Yep, the swing is a combination of up and in, right? Mm -hmm. Creates the the backswing to get the hands in the right spot at the top or even halfway back. So if you use all your in early, you have to lift late, right? Yep. We don't want that to happen because that creates that over the top motion. And here's a really cool tool to use when you're filming your swing to check and see how, how well you're doing. So we just put a box from his heel to his toe and then dragged it up above his head. You can see right here, his hands are pretty much dead middle of that box. Perfect spot. It's a nice spot to change direction from right there or finish the backswing. Right? Yep. So you want your hands either in the middle or closer to the front of that box. What you want to do your best to avoid is anything back in here. That's and the yellow. And, and then certainly <laughs> anything back in here. Is that green, this will get yellow, you in trouble. Red, yeah. yeah. <laughs> green caution yeah. and warning, right? Yeah. That's a good. <laughs> that's good. I like it. All right, so let's take a look at another golfer. So this is one example um, because, you know, Colin does a lot of unique things in his golf swing. He's got a phenomenal golf swing, does a lot of unique things. But once you start seeing 3D swings or seeing great players on 3D and you kind of remove their signature clothes or their signature walk and you just start to see how the body and how the club moves, you very quickly realize there's not a million ways to swing the golf club. So many of these guys – fall in very tight parameters with one another and do so many things, so many key things, very similarly. Especially the body movements. It's incredible, right? It is. And if you can match this nice kind of plain vanilla arm and club motion up with a good pivot, you're on your way. That's exactly right. All right, let's jump over to another one. All right, one of the, and this is the highest compliment I could pay a golfer, one of the simplest, most basic fundamental golf swings you will ever see yeah plain vanilla it's a good pivot yep good club face good swing plane ball goes straight yeah adam doesn't really do any outlier moves that i can think of he just does so many things so well and that's why he's been so good for so long a lot of so's in there all right 
So we're going to look at the same checkpoints we just looked at with Colin. Let me get them back to shaft parallel or thereabouts right in there. And there it is. You can see pretty darn vertical left arm, pretty much right over his toe line. Now Adam has his hips more over his ankles or actually has them in front of his ankles when he starts a swing. So you're going to see the, the result of that as we keep going. And then as we get them to left arm parallel, and we can go right down the middle of his body. Again, it's, he does so many things textbook. The grip, the left and right hand split the middle of that line. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty textbook. You get yourself in that spot. I mean, it, look at where you can't tell if this is downswing or backswing. Yeah, and he could change direction right there and hit the ball right on the button. Yeah. You, if this was a lob wedge and he made a downswing from there, or I don't know if it's a seven iron or whatever iron it is, like you're, you're in a great spot either going up or coming down from here. And if we put the box around him, easier said than done, we'll use that right there. You can see now he is more in front of that box, right? In front side of the box. Yep. So as Sean said, he's in that green zone, and that's where you want to be. Um, you're giving yourself just an unbelievable chance to change directions and make a downswing at any point in this backswing. So when you're talking about hitting more greens, you can't just rely on hitting more greens from a full stock swing, which we see so many golfers do, and then they just try to gauge the D cell. Well, that's a tough way to play golf. Especially when you go above an eight iron. Yeah. If you start D selling with five irons, you're in big trouble. But when you can get yourself at the first half of this golf swing that well, put it in that good of a spot, man, you're going to improve your greens and regulation going to improve your strokes gain approaches and you're going to take more money off your friends. Yeah, and you can get yourself set up to make more of a non-thinking downswing, right? Just an athletic move through the ball from there because you don't have to undo so many of the problems that you may have created before with the poor backswing. Yep, exactly Just go right. Ahead and hit it. Exactly right. All right, so first order of business, get yourself feedback. Live view. Live camera. view, camera, alignment stick, some sort of feedback. Then go slow enough to make this change if you're already not doing it. And then ingrain the change, and you're going to start to see a difference. Like the lesson we had yesterday, once you get the golfer to slow down, and you get them to feel, because it felt drastically different. His hands were, we'll use Adam as an example. If we wanted his hands right here, his hands were back here. That six inches or four inches, however much it was, felt like four feet to him. So it's going to feel drastic. Do not rely on your feels to make a swing change because you feel this already. You need to feel this. Sometimes that can feel like a mile. It's going to feel like you're out here. You know, it's gonna, yeah, it's going to feel like you're out there. Exactly right. Yeah. You, that's why the feedback is so important. Make sure you practice with feedback. Make sure you set the camera up correctly, and we'll just do a quick look at that. You want to set the camera hands height right behind the hands. We see so many swings filled up here somewhere over near the golf ball, up too high, that you're not getting a real clear view of anything that's happening in the golf swing other than maybe shirt color. That's about it. That's about it. So take the time to put the camera in the right spot. Give yourself some feedback. Start to ingrain this first half of the golf swing because it's going to make the back half of your golf swing that much better. If you found this video helpful and you need more help with your consistency, we want to help you with that. Go to the first comment below this video. You'll see a link. It's our first pinned comment. There'll be a link in there. Click on that link. It'll take you to our number one consistency drill to help you hit the ball more solidly and more consistent every time you're out on the course.